morning. Hello, saints of God. Hello, worshipers of the Most High God. It is a wonderful Sunday morning. And no matter what's going on out there, we know that we are blessed. We know that we are blessed. Yeah. That we are blessed. Thank you, Lord, for keeping and preserving us, for protecting us and elevating us, for healing us. We thank you. Hallelujah. Let me hear you say, Belay. Jesus. We're blessed in the field. 
God, we thank you. We thank him for every blessing. Every single gift, every single perfect gift comes from the Father. And the reason why, one of the, one of the blessings that he provides is victory. We thank you, Lord, for the victory over everything that comes in our way. against the Lord no one can no one will who will stand against our King no one can <laughs> no one
hands together. Come on. Continue to praise our Lord. Continue to lift up the name of Jesus. Continue to lift up the healer. Victory belongs to him. And if you are joint heir with Jesus Christ, you have victory. Victory belongs to you as well. Victory belongs to you. Victory has been planted and engrafted on the inside of you. Hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. We thank you for the victory. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, we worship you. We honor you. Hallelujah. The water is stirring right now. The healing water of Jesus is flowing right now. If you need a healing, if you need deliverance, if you need restoration, if you need prayer, I want to invite you right now. Meet me here at this altar. Healing. Meet me here. Come on. We have social distance measures in place. Deliver me here at this altar. I'm telling you right now, don't be ashamed because healing Deliver. is here. Power. Victory is here. Deliverance. Hallelujah. Oh. Healing. Power. Oh. Jump in that water. Let's jump in that water. The river, the river is flowing. The river is flowing. The river is flowing. The river is flowing. Right now, 
I thank you for every soul that is here today. I pray and ask, Father, that you would meet the need right now, whether it be spiritually, physically, emotionally, financial, peace right now in Jesus' name, healing right now in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for those who are struggling right now, who wants to give up and throw in the towel, Jesus. I ask that you would touch them right now. Physical ailments, Lord. Somebody's here standing in the gap for someone else, Father. I ask that you would meet the need right now in the name of Jesus. You are the Holy One. You are the Righteous One, Father. I thank you for their faithfulness. I thank you for their tenacity and their strength to continue to follow you, Lord. I pray and ask that you would heal, that you would strength, that you would cover, that you would comfort, that you would deliver in the name of Jesus. I thank you, Father, that the spirit of praise is on their lips. I thank you, Father, that the spirit of victory is in their mouths, Lord. That victory belongs to them, Lord. Victory belongs to them. Victory belongs to them. Victory belongs to them right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah, for they are made whole. They are made complete in you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would meet the need right now. Meet the need. Meet the need. Meet the need right now. Meet the need right now. Meet right now. Meet right now, Father. Come on, saints. I need you to stretch your hands right now. Stretch your hands right now at this altar. We got some healing going on right now. We got miracles flowing right now. Come on, stretch your hands and believe God. Hallelujah. We thank you for the deliverance, Lord. We thank you right now. We we bind the spirit of fatigue right now. We cancel the assignment over the enemy right now, over their lives right now, God. And I thank you, Father, for healing, power, restoration, deliverance in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You said you do it comfort. Comfort right now in the name of Jesus. Comfort right now. Those who are grieving the loss of loved ones. Those who are grieving, those who are ailing right now. God, I pray right now and ask you, Father. McNaff, McNaff, McNaffin, Holy Spirit. Lord, thank you that they're healed. Hallelujah. Come on, you at this altar. Lift up your hands and receive your healing right now. Amen. It's the point of contact from the Holy Spirit that's touching you. It's the Holy Spirit that's touching you. It's the Holy Spirit that's touching you. He's 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 touching you. In your spirit, in your soul, and in your body. He's touching you. He's touching you. We usher you in right now. He's touching you. Hallelujah. He's touching you. Spirit of the living God. He's touching you right now. In the name of Jesus. He's touching you. He's healing you. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, stretch your hands right now. Stretch your hands and believe God. You right now watching online. You in your bed right now. God is healing you right Jesus, now in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you. Lord go beyond this, Father, we this sanctuary. You. Go beyond the cameras, Lord, and move right into the sanctuary. Flow right now. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We need to move right now. He's touching you. We thank you. Hallelujah. He's touching you. Whoa. Because he is a healer, because he is a provider, because he is a deliverer, 
because he is God all by himself. Because he's amazing. Because he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It's why we love him more than anything.
toda hora. I worship and adore you. If you know there's no one greater. Just want to tell you. Lord, we love you. Lord, I love you. Jesus, I worship and adore you. You know, sometimes I think we, we fail to realize that, you know, when we're going through our valleys and we come out and we get to the other side, there was a storm, the wind, the waves, but you get to the other side. And I'm happy that you're on the other side. But there are some people still going through the valley, still going through the storm. So on a Sunday like this, sometimes you just need to give a moment for those that still might be in something. Now, I'm happy for you guys that got on the other side. Glory to God. But then sometimes we forget, quickly forget what it was like for us in a storm. And it's okay to take a moment and allow people that moment. You know, there are 51 times in the New Testament the phrase, one another. As an American, we tend to think very self-centeredly. 
We do. And as you've been injured in life, if you've experienced some crazy stuff, I understand that. You, you know, you, you, you need your pain and where you are and what you're facing with. I, I get it. But the real hallmark of a mature Christian is that in the midst of yours, you can still care about others. That's when you know you mature. You know, we spent some time with my grandbaby yesterday. She's eight, and we were marveling at how much she's maturing, and, and, and she's just talking and doing some stuff. But twice yesterday, I still saw some immaturity. And that's how we are as believers. It's okay to take a moment and allow others to get theirs. Yeah. Father in heaven, we thank you because we do declare that we love you. We love you, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. And we worship and adore you. And as Minister Tim said, you are the healer, deliverer, strong tower, shield, buckler, our very present help in a time of need. You're the lover of my soul, the lifter of my head. You're my rear guard. You are everything I need you to be. Not only did you save me and you restored me, but you've already gone before me to make crooked paths straight, hills and valleys made level. I thank you, Lord, that we, have, we can learn to rest in you. God, your name is, Jeho is um, El Shaddai, yes. the God that nourishes, the God that supplies. <laughs> thank you, the one that nourishes. So we thank you for nourishment this morning as we lift up holy hands and give you the sacrifice of praise, declaring that there is none like you. We love you and we honor you. And let all who agree say, Amen, 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 amen. 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 You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. Good morning, family. So good to see you beautiful people this morning. It's, it's such a blessing to be able to, to start our week off. Yes, yes. What a way to start our week off. Amen. Finding Amen. some like-minded people. Yes. Lovers of God. Mm -hmm. Christ followers. Yep. Share our worship experience with them. Yep. Exalt his name. What a way to get the week started. Amen. Amen. So Amen. welcome, welcome, Amen. welcome, welcome. My name is Tony Dunn. I'm the senior pastor here at New Day Christian Fellowship, this amazing church. I'm also the bishop over the New Day Global Network of Churches. Bishop simply means I pastor other pastors, okay? So if you call me bishop, great. If you call me pastor, great. If you call me Tony, I'll still answer. Hallelujah. <laughs> and this is my amazingly beautiful, awesome wife, Jackie, who I just love beyond measure. Amen. 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 Good morning, everyone. It's so blessed to see you this morning. It's just a beautiful day today, and I'm just blessed that all, all of us are worshiping the Lord together. And for you guys that are online, we want to hear from you. We want to know how your experience is. We want to know if you have any questions. So text New Day Connect at 94000. What are they to text now? Text New Day Connect at 94000. New Day Connect. Is that one word or three words? How is that? That is one word. New Day Connect, one word, at 94000. Amen. Is there Amen. anyone worshiping with us today for the very first time? It's your first time at a service at New Day. I'm not going to ask you to stand, but can you lift your hand, please? Just want to know who you welcome, are. Welcome. Welcome. Good morning. Welcome. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. Amen. Welcome. Welcome. Amen. So glad you're joining us this morning. Amen. Amen, amen. Yes, yes. Well, Thank as you, you can see, our ushers are giving you guys, all of you, our first-time guest card. And what I'd like you to do, I know you're just meeting me, but I want to get to know you. <laughs> if you could complete the card, at yes. the end of the service, you're going to take that completed card to our Connection Center. You'll be directed where to go. And we have a special gift there for yes. you guys. It's our way of saying thank, thank you for you. taking time thank to you. be with us today. Amen? Yes. Yes. Amen. Yes. So glad you're here. Can we give yes. them a hand, please? Yes. First time guest, yes. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Um, amen. And to our guests online, if this yes. is your first time viewing us, or yes. maybe you want to get yes. to know us better, Please again, you know. text us also, New Day Connect, at 94000, yes. three zeros, and one of our amazing ministers will get back to you. Amen? Amen. Can everyone stand, please? You don't have to hug one another, but if you can turn, wave and say, Welcome, Welcome to, to New, New Day! Day. Ready? Bow your heads, please. 
Father God, in the name of Jesus, that name above every name, we come before you, Heavenly Father. We have authority in that name, dear Lord God, the name in which every knee will bow, every tongue will confess that name, the authority in that name. But demons tremble at that name, Father God. So we come before you in authority of that name, humbly, dear Lord God, thanking him for your word, thanking you, Heavenly Father, your word will not return unto you void. It shall accomplish that which you please. It shall prosper in the hearts of the people you're sending it. So my prayer is that everyone here and online have ears to hear what your spirit is saying, dear Lord God. Thank you, Lord, that we will, we will receive your engrafted word with meekness. We will mix it with faith. We will bring forth fruit. That fruit shall remain, and you will be glorified in heaven and on the earth. Let all who agree say, in Jesus' name, amen, 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 amen. So today's message titled is The Domino Effect. The domino effect. So here's a picture of dominoes, okay? And I think, I know for me as a kid, I love to do this. I love to do this because my father loved to play dominoes, and so did all the other black Baptist pastors in Shreveport, Louisiana. Hallelujah. So you wonder, what were they doing in the middle of the week? Yeah, they would study their sermons, but then were some domino playing brothers, okay? And so I learned to play dominoes at an early age, but I also learned to play with the dominoes. And one of the things I would lo love to do is just stack the dominoes and then just make them fall, and then I got a little bit more elaborate. Mom and Daddy, can y'all buy me some more dominoes? so I can make something even larger. But today I want to talk to you about that first domino, that first domino. And that domino for a lot of us represents an obstacle, something difficult, something hard, something to overcome. It could be a barrier, a wall, something you're contending with, maybe, maybe some, a stronghold, I don't know. But I do know this, if you can get that first one over, the rest will fall. And the beautiful thing is that not only will those dominoes fall in your life, Praise God, they will fall in the lives of other people. Like, Bishop, I don't know. Well, I'm glad you said that. Let's go to the Word. Turn with me, please, to Matthew chapter 5, verse 15. Matthew 5, 15. Matthew 5, 15. I love that chuckle. That means Michelle is back. Hey, Michelle. Hey, man. She's been on vacation. Good to see you. Matthew 5, 15. You guys there? Like, no, Bishop, we just turned the phone on. Give us a minute, man. <laughs> Slow down. Okay, swipe, scroll, whatever you got to do. Uh, if you're old school, turn, turn your pages. Matthew 5, 15, Matthew 5, 15, and we're reading, reading from the New Living Translation today, okay? And this is Jesus speaking, and he makes a statement. I, I guarantee you probably 90% of you guys have heard this one. No one lights a lamp and then puts it under a basket. Oh, yeah, duh. Okay, let's keep reading. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand where it gives light to everyone in the house. So your job is to give light because you have the light of the world living inside of you. Correct? Yes. You need to stop hiding out. We're going to talk about a lady all of you are very familiar with, but I, I, I think if you just listen up, listen closely today, you're going to see things a little differently. Here's a lady that went from 12 years of obscurity, the woman with the issue of blood, living in the shadows to becoming a trendsetter, Trays, a trailblazer, an influencer. You know, now on social media, we have influencers. I be seeing uh, articles on people, they're an influencer. I ain't never heard of them. They influence me. <laughs> but influencing somebody, I understand with the social media deal, and, and, and that's awesome. E even like uh, Tajalea, you know, uh, she's an influencer here. Got a gazillion, thousands of people following her, and she's an influencer, okay? And then the other new thing within the, in more of the religious circles, more of the pastors, we say they're thought leaders, Thought leaders. So a couple of pastors who are rocking this right now, you know, they're thought leaders. Okay, cool. Now, we got this lady here who had this issue of blood for 12 years, and here's the law. The law says if you're on your, your, your monthly, and I think all of you guys understand what I'm saying, because they didn't have soap or water and all the other hygienic products that are made available to us today, it was like stay away. Now, the Jewish people at that time, they were so great with hygiene, so even hundreds and thousands of years later, well, hundreds, about a thousand years later with like the bubonic plague and all of that, everybody in Europe is wondering, why the Jews not dying when everybody else is dying? And, and by the way, COVID ain't the first pandemic. Glory to God. Okay. So how can the Jews not dying like everybody else? One, they keep themselves clean. Mm -hmm. So one of the ways they did was social distance. Because I'm not clean. Let me stay away, and let me just stay outside the camp, okay? And so, till I'm better. You better now? Yeah. Okay, then you can come back in. Oh, it's time to step outside the camp again. And this is how a few million people went across the desert. It was certain practices like this in the Old Testament that, that that's why God instituted those laws. We So many times we think the laws are there. I can't have no fun. I can't good life. The laws are there to protect you. 
Think about that for a moment, okay? So this lady made a decision, though, uh, and, and, and I got to push. Now, one other thing about this lady, she has spent all the money she had trying to get better. Going to all the doctors, 12 years, this is a tough sister now. She hung in there. Go with me, please, to Mark chapter 5, and we're going to pick this up. I'm going to pick this up. Mark 5, verse uh, Mark 5, 24. Now, Jesus had just gone to the other side of the lake. You guys that have gone to uh, Galilee with us, you, um, I'm sorry, to Israel, you know, on the other side of the lake uh, where, um, that's where the, uh, the man, he cast all the demons out the man, okay? And they ran, they, the demons went into the pig. Now they got back in a boat. Now they're back on the other side. And so they land and everybody comes around him. You guys there? Um, uh, Mark 5, 24. 24, Jesus went with him, and all the people followed, crowding around him. There was a man named Jairus said, hey, my daughter's sick. I need you to come heal my daughter. Jesus was like, cool, let's go. Verse 25, a woman in the crowd, here's a woman, who, a woman in the crowd has suffered for 12 years, say 12 years, 12 years, with constant bleeding. Now, I need you to think about this for a moment, okay? Physically, now, I'm a man, no clue, no experience like that, but from what y'all be telling me, it's serious. Hallelujah. So, for a week, it's serious. And can you imagine 12 years? Now, I need you to imagine this 12 years now where you can't be around other people. What does that do to you mentally, emotionally, and psychologically? Now, I really need you guys that are wired like my wife and wired like Natalie and others. I need you to think for a minute because y'all people, 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 persons. And you can't be around people. Natalie, remember calling me during COVID and like, Bishop, I'm coming apart. I need to get out. One of our friends, Joseph, what's his wife? Pastor Joseph, his wife. I can't think of her name right now. Um, but um, we, we, we were sitting together. Uh, this was recently, Mar- March, we were in Hawaii. And she asked everybody, how are you guys doing, doing COVID? Because it drove me crazy. Because she is, she is su- she's an eye on steroids. She, you know, no, she's serious about hers. You know, I, I just, I just, I can't. In fact, we were sitting there eating. And she's like, okay it's, okay, it's too much silence. Somebody needs to talk. Okay, you know what? We, can we eat and then we'll talk? <laughs> That's how she connects. If this lady was like that, can you imagine how hard it was for her? I don't know how she was. Well, my point is, it's difficult physically, socially, mentally, emotionally. And, and, and what about her family? I got another one for you, fellas. Enough <laughs> said. Okay, verse 26. <laughs> she had suffered, say suffered, a great deal from many doctors. And over the years, she has spent everything she had to pay them. Now, that can be demoralizing, hopeless. But she had gotten no better. I mean, that, that could just deflate you. In fact, she had gotten worse. You know, it's, uh, Jack and I have had this experience a couple of times. She's forgotten her medication, once in Brazil, once in South Africa, and once in somewhere else in Europe. And, and so here's the thing. Now, we got a gazillion laws and restrictions in America. It's amazing. There in the mother countries walked up, we need this and that. There you go, like $8. In America, $612, please. And your doctor needs to sign off. We got all this. For, I, I, I know it's a bureaucracy. You know, I get it. I get it. I understand all of that. But I'm, I'm thinking about this lady here. And if you can for a moment, just put yourself in her shoes. She spent all she had on those she thought could help her and grew worse and grew worse. But she didn't give up hope. So 27, she had heard about Jesus. She heard. Faith comes by. Okay, she heard about Jesus, so she came up behind him through the crowd and touched his robe. Now, here's the significance of that, because, uh, baby girl, you ain't supposed to be in no crowds. So when do we break the rules, and when do we honor the rules? That's a whole other sermon. A whole other sermon. But she heard about Jesus, so I got a choice. I can stay the way I am, having people keep shunning me. Well, you know what? I'm going to get better. And she pressed through, and she touched his robe. Now, I need you to see verse 28. We're going to camp out here for a minute. Watch this. Verse 28. For she thought. I've done this a hundred times. Jackie, can you throw me that water bottle, please? My water. Yeah, right there. And I appreciate everybody that leaves me water. I don't know who does it on Sundays. Hallelujah. And I don't like it cold. It's room temperature. Thank you. Whoever doing this, hallelujah. Appreciate you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. And I need my phone, too. Yeah, throw me my phone right there. Uh-huh. Yeah, throw me my phone. Got it, okay. And now, Jackie, throw me your thoughts. <laughs> but thoughts are powerful. Intangible, but powerful. 
Can you give this to me in an amplified classic version? I want you guys to really see this. Now, you remember this was originally written in Greek. Greek, thank you. Okay, let's do this again. One, two, three. Greek. Greek. Oh, New Testament written in Greek. Okay, smarties. Old Testament written in Hebrew. There we go, minister. All right. All right, hallelujah. Okay, amen. A little attention. Now, it says here, for she kept saying... Now, really, it was self-talk. What's your self-talk? I want to show you how powerful self-talk is. Now, one thing about Pastor Tony Glenn Dunn, I watch what I tell myself. I watch what I tell myself. You got to watch how you think because our, life, our lives move in the direction of our dominant thoughts. I can tell what you're thinking just watch, by watching how you're living. It's not a criticism because as a man thinks in his heart. So see, y'all thought I was all deep. I'm just telling you a Bible. <laughs> For she kept saying, that's not one or two. That's why this whole flipping thing, I'm going to speak it into the universe. <laughs> Look, <laughs> people come up with some stuff. They're like some shortcuts. You better get a job and some good credit. Look. <laughs> <laughs> For she kept saying that this is an internal dialogue she was having. She, now, watch this. This is significant. Remember the domino effect, right? Okay, because her, her domino is about to come tumbling down. We already know this. If I only touch his garments, I shall be restored to health. That did not happen. Where she got it from, I don't know, but her faith was such, all I need to do is touch his garment. And it probably was still built around the culture because I can't get close to him because I'm on my cycle. Yes. And the law says, the culture says, blah, 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 blah. And so the culture a lot of times restricts us. We believe what the law of the land says and all that. Now, okay, I understand the laws that protect me. There's a reason that the speed limit is only 65 in some places, hallelujah, okay? And it is, it, you know, I, and it's like, well, you know, it's so funny because everybody, not everybody, but people, I remember the seatbelt law came. Put on your seatbelt. Now, ain't nobody tell me what to do. I want to do whatever I want. Okay, okay, that's a submission issue. That's a submission issue. Y'all stretch your hands to Minister Cooperwood, who just prayed for us to be healed. I think there's an area he still needs deliverance in. No, no, I'm teasing. I'm teasing. I'm teasing, Coop. I'm teasing. But that thing about... <laughs> I thought he was your boy. <laughs> but but here, here's the thing that we often don't understand what our challenges are. And submission is a big one for a lot of us. The Bible says we've been given governing authorities. Yeah, that's a whole other message. I'm going to do that one one day. Yeah. Because everybody that was in the Bible has submitted to somebody that wasn't godly. Oh, that's going to mess with you. That's going to jack up your theology. Okay. For she kept saying, if I only touch his garments. That's what she kept saying, right? Okay, go back to New Living for me. Now, the bottom line, if you read this in Greek, it's the redundancy that's important. It's a redundancy. It's not a one and done. I got to learn. I, gotta, I, got, I, got, I just got to think. Nico, I remember one time it was just me, you, and playing tennis. I won the first game, first, you know, up to 40, and you spanked me like the next eight in a row. And I'm looking at Nico. I, was like, I can't figure this dude out. It's, he, just, he, just, he was on one that day. And I, I, I just couldn't get you, and he got hot, and we quit. I'm like, I don't know. I went home to Jackie. I don't know. Nico was on one today. I came back next week and beat the tar out of him, though. And I'm not in a braggadocious sense, but sometimes we give up and we quit. I didn't go back and tell myself, I'm a loser. I, I just suck at tennis. I don't know if I'm going to play anymore. I don't know. No. And that's a simple example. But some of us, you know, it's, it's just what are you telling yourself? What are you saying? What are you saying? I'm going to say what the Word of God says. No matter my external circumstances, I, I don't care. A gas can be $12 an hour. That means I'm going to get a raise. I don't like it, but I'm going to overcome. And this is, this, wait, the Bible says God knows how to rescue the godly while leaving the evil under oppression. Yeah. All of a sudden, it'll go left for everybody else, but Tony Dunn just slide to the right. Yeah. How Tony end up over there? Holy Spirit. Who are you following? Think about it for a moment. Think about it. So she kept saying to herself, and this is what I'm telling you, you have to watch how you're thinking. And for a lot of us, we haven't gotten a breakthrough because our thinking has not shifted. Now, I need you to show you the power of culture right now because she kept saying, if I can touch his robe, I will be healed. Got it? Okay, there was a redundancy in her thinking. Now, 29, when she did it, 
Immediately. Say immediately. immediately. Now, I need you to see something. What stopped? The bleeding. But there was something else that kept going. Immediately, the bleeding stopped, and she could feel in her body. Say body. Physically, everything shifted and was good, that she had been healed of her terrible condition. Listen, listen, everybody look at me for a second. Look at me, please look at me, look at me. Look, 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 please look. No, I ain't slowing down. No, look, look, look. <laughs> Y'all got to get this. I'm serious because I've been watching too many people. You've been here forever and you're still struggling. You don't have to. You don't. And I know what I'm talking about because it, it, if it happened to me, and I'm going to be honest with you, y'all know ain't much to me. You know, it's like, yeah, he is kind of simple. It's not. Nothing complex. It's the t- be honest. Some of y'all probably know this. Yeah, he, yo, yeah. The bleeding stopped. She could feel in her body that she had been healed of her terrible condition. We're in her body. Next verse, please. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. Jesus realized that once a healing power virtue, that's the word dunamis. Dunamis in Greek, dunamis, that dynamic power, okay? You know, we talk about being filled with the Holy Spirit, that dynamic, okay. It, it, she drew it out of him and gone out of him. She heard, she didn't say, Jesus, how you doing? My name is woman with issue of blood. She like, I'm going to just slide in here. Bam! And all of a sudden, her body just got right, okay? Now, he's like, hey, somebody touched me. So he turned around in the crowd and said, hey, hey, who touched my robe? Who, who touched me? Who touched me? Who touched me? Now, this is the humanity side of Jesus because he's fully God and fully man. Because at this point, he's like, who touched me? Now, next verse, please. Watch this. Please watch this. Watch this. His disciples said to him, all the, you know, Peter, James, John, and all the people said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. I, I, I love how it's like, it can, I, need, I need you to see this for a minute. Minister Ed, can you come in for a second? Can, come here, Minister Ed, come here. Yeah, just watch, watch this, okay? And he's going to be Jesus. He's tall enough. Come here. You're going to be Jesus. You're going to be Jesus. And, 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 and you say, like, who t- like, look around like, who's touched me? And I'm going to say, you're like, Jesus, come on, Jesus. Man, everybody touch. How you have the audacity to be semi-sarcastic towards Jesus? I need you to see, sometimes we get a little too familiar. And Jesus, everybody. Now, a supernatural thing just happened, and the disciples missed it. I think a higher quality question would have been, Jesus, who touched you, and why don't you know? <laughs> so now, if his disciples who walked with him for three and a half years was tripping, what does they say about us? Maybe we need to learn to ask higher quality questions. We ain't as smart as we think we are. We're not, and that's not a criticism, but I need you to think for a minute. Where is your universe? Where are the planets and stars that you created? Where are the angelic hosts? Not in just Earth. You think about all he did in the supernatural realm. That's stuff that exists we ain't seen yet. There's a seen and unseen. Oh, we're going to have a good time in September on that one, seen and unseen, okay? Because the unseen is much more powerful than the seen. We need to learn to tap into the unseen and pull that stuff down into the scene. As a whole, we'll, we'll get there in September. But here, here's my point. Here's my point. But sometimes we become so familiar that we, we, I don't know, we just stop thinking. They were talking to the Son of God, the God incarnate, Emmanuel, as you always teach in December, God with us. They had God with them, and they, they still default into themselves. And how many of us still default to ourselves? Yes, you're smart. And our problem is most of you, especially in Corona, y'all smarter than the rest of your families. You know you are, because everybody coming to you when they got problems, don't they? Text you, email you, and you're like, he just can't get out of trouble. Okay, and, and you did, hallelujah, and I'm glad for you. But then sometimes that can easily lead you to begin, you think you're all that in a bag of chips. Okay, you figured out some stuff. You know, I was talking like, um, you remember I told you a few weeks ago about the man with the, the, the luggage, my expensive luggage, and the racism and all that. I was telling you about that. And I remember being in the store, in a man's luggage store. My thought was, yo, man, I done had some retail stores too. You better back up. We think we're all that. I had a, we had, what, three years. We opened up a retail store in October. We sold animal-themed products, okay? I mean, it was like a jungle. You had paintings. We had figurines. We had fuzzy slippers with all kind of animal heads. We paid, what, $2.99. I was selling them bad boys for $21.99. Um, it, it, we had all of that. We did, and we would open up in October. And on December 26th, we were closed because you weren't bringing nothing back. You know, y'all like to return stuff on, on Christmas. Nah, we can, uh, not, not. You came back to the mall to my store. <laughs> knocking. Mm, I'm gone. That's it. Shut down. I'll be back in October in another mall. 
That was my business model. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. So my point is that we can easily begin to think we got some stuff figured out. Our houses are bigger than everybody else, and I'm telling you that. And we can get to the point where we, like, we read the scriptures. I heard it before. I heard it before. That's why I have to qualify. I'm going to talk to you about the woman with issues of blood. And some of y'all have heard some stuff right now. I ain't even got to the good part yet that you never heard before. How much other stuff exists that you haven't heard simply because you think you've arrived? Subconsciously. Because you're better than everybody else around you. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, and he'll exalt you in due season. Amen? Thank you. Thank you, Minister Ed. Okay, verse 30. Jesus realized. No, no, no. 31. Where are we? 31? 31. Okay, yeah. His disciples said to him, look at this crowd pressing around you. Who can ask? How can you ask? How can you ask? Who touched me? 32. But he ignored them chumps. He said, but he kept on looking around to see who had done it. I ain't even dealing with you cats right now. 33. Then, watch this, then the frightened woman. Wait, what was she? Did she get healed? Why is she frightened? Say it again, Minister Dwayne. She wasn't supposed to be there. Now, where does fear exist within your three-dimensional makeup? Your tripart being, where does fear reside? And your mind, which is your soul, your psyche. You remember, you are a spirit. That's pneuma, okay? You don't have a spirit. You are a spirit. And your spirit lives in a body. And, and, and you have a soul, which is your mind, your will, your emotions. So the fear is residing in her soul. Now, when you get saved, you know, your, your spirit is sealed by the Holy Spirit. But your mind is unrenewed. So remember, I kept stressing her body. Bam, I'm feeling good. But nothing shifted here. So she still stayed where she was psychologically. There was no shift there. You understand? That's why you pray, Bishop, be in agreement with me. And uh, uh, Brother Ralph, uh, Minister Ralph and Minister Kathy, this is funny. Because people, you know, how we, we, t- we are touch and agreeing kind of people. That's how we came up, okay? We touch and agree, okay? And the scripture actually says, as touching. It doesn't say we actually got to touch, but we, you know, we're going to take that strip. We're going to touch. We're going to hold hands. We're going to pray. In fact, we're going to get some anointing oil too on this one. Okay, so we really going to believe and release our faith, okay? Got it. But my, but my point is this. My point is this. Is that what is my point? The fright, right, the fear. Okay, the fear. I need to stay on my notes. But anyway, the frightened woman, it resides in her psyche, in her mind, her will. That's where it resides, okay? Now, so when she got her healing, it was her body that shifted, and her mind stayed the same. That's why you can see people who go, play, be in agreement with me for a job. I'm going for this interview. Y'all know how you do it. You text me. Okay, I'm walking in now. Okay, Bishop, I'm in the waiting room. Y'all know how you do it. And me, I'm, me and Jackie praying and praying, and you come out, I got the job, I got the job. But then the next day you go to work, I'm scared. I don't know if I can do this. That's where this woman was. Trembling got the realization of what had happened to her. Came and fell to her knees in front of him and told her, I, I got to confess. I got to own up to it. Frightened. Frightened. Now, look at the next part. Next verse. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you go in because she wasn't in peace. You can get answered prayer and still not be in peace. I need my prayers answered, and I need to live in peace. So you ask the Lord, show me what to do. Okay, that's what I'm supposed to do. And you step into it, and I'm terrified. What are you scared of? Now, I'm not mad at you, but this is an example for us to see right here. So he said, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. Your suffering is over. Now, this suffering, now, here's the thing. If she she gets healed, right, and immediately she goes back and doing the same thing she used to do too, shrink back, in obscurity, hiding out. Immediately, she went back and did what she always did. I'm hiding out. I'm hiding out. I'm hiding. I'm hiding because she's been hiding for 12 years. So her mind wasn't renewed. It's not enough. And, it's, it, and, 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 and again, I don't know. This is Ralph and Kathy Day. So um, you're, you're, like we used to do those encounters. And you, we casting out demons and people. I mean, we done seen some stuff and all that. And it made me mad. Go back later on. Them suckers got demons back in them again. It's not suckers. She ain't here yet. We've got three more weeks. Okay. <laughs> My mother's going to join our church, and she doesn't like me saying suckers. Okay, and I'm working on it. Okay. 
I got to give honor to him, my mom, right? Honor your parents. I'm going to honor her. I'm, I'm going to stop the suckers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I got three more weeks. Daughter, <laughs> your face. she came by this week, looked at her room and everything, and then her and Jackie are going to pick out some stuff and do some changes. It's great. We're looking forward to it. But daughter, your faith has made you well. And Jesus had to tell her, no, no, you got to get your complete healing. You guys remember the, the ten lepers, okay? They came to Jesus and said, hey, heal us, heal us, heal us. And he said, okay, go show yourselves to the priest. And the Bible says as they went, they were healed. One turned around and came back and said, thank you. And that one, Jesus said, where's everybody else? And he's like, I don't know. They kept going. And that's my translation. They kept going. And he, and, but he says, you are now restored to total health. Literally, the difference was these other guys, there's still going to be some evidence that they were unhealthy for so long. This one is going to be like, you, like with no, I, I like to say no scars. You've seen people go through something, but you, there's no evidence they've been through anything. Now, you've seen some people going through some, you can still, they still got that chip on their shoulder, still got that attitude. It don't take much to set them off. They still get a little angry. You speak in tongues one minute, and you're cursing somebody else out the next. The mind hasn't been renewed. And sometimes we get in resistance to the mind renewal. And Jesus is like, take the whole package. You get excited because you got physically healed. That's great, and that's awesome. But that's the mind has to be renewed, too. And this is what he's saying. Your suffering is over. You ain't got to be scared no more. I said, Tyler Perry, you ain't scared. Who said it? I ain't scared. I don't know where that came from. I keep hearing people, black people say that. Uh, scared, okay. Yeah, you ain't going to be scared. It's good. Go back. Hold your head up, lady. Walk back to your village. What's up, y'all? Hey, how y'all doing? What y'all want to eat? I'm going to cook up something tonight. It's going to be a celebration. I'm back. As opposed to shrinking back. I'm healed and whole. No. Total deliverance. Total deliverance is what's made available for us. Thank you, Kim Caffey. Amen. <laughs> Somebody got it. Somebody got it. All right. Go with me, please, to Mark chapter 6. Now, I talked to you about the domino effect. I said, you get healed. It can be a shift in others. It can be. It can be. So one of the things, too, because we had a guy who's no longer with us. He passed away. But he said to me one time after service, he was so direct. Yeah, you know, whatever. Y'all remember Papa Jim, right? Hilarious. Hey, hey, come here. Let me talk to you something. Let me talk to you about something. Why you talk about yourself so much doing, doing church? You know, you got the Bible. That's enough about Jesus, ain't it? I said, Papa. And that's what I don't get about. I know some of y'all been like, who do you think he is? No, Papa ain't mean no harm. And, and Papa, I said, Papa, I need to connect with people. And if I don't be transparent, I'm going to be just like a talking head up there. People need to know the things that I've been through so they can get hope and all that. He's like, oh, oh, that's pretty good. He shook my hands. It was cool. <laughs> Proverbs, is it 14.1 or 15.1? says, a soft answer turns away wrath. Yes. You ain't always got to get a little $2 attitude. And sisters, what, and I don't know, what is this neck rolling? You take a deep breath. What, what is that? But anyway. So Jesus and his, his uh, they had gone across. Um, they had fed 5,000 people, okay, they're doing a miraculous and, and walked on water and all that. And then they get back on, on this side of the, the lake again, where the woman had gotten healed, but just a little further north in Genesaret. Now watch this. Uh, after they crossed the lake, they landed at Genesaret. They brought the boat to shore. Next verse. And climbed out. The people recognized Jesus at once, right? Next verse, please. And they ran. Say ran. ran. Wait, that's Jesus. And they turn off. They don't walk. They run. They ran. What did they run to do? They ran throughout the whole area carrying what kind of people? Sick. They went and got their sick folk on mats. They probably, I guess they couldn't walk or where they grabbed them. And wherever they heard he was. Why are they carrying people on mats? Next verse, please. Wherever, say wherever. wherever. Now, I love this, too, because it really expounds wherever he went, meaning in the villages. Now, a village is just, just kind of that. It's outside the main city, the main town, okay? You guys, uh, just get a picture, you, especially you, you get this in, like, South Africa. You have the city, then you have the townships, then you have the villages, okay? But in this instance, uh, the villages are the more little, little kind of remote area. Usually where, like, workers or people not quite as skilled, they will work. Then you have the cities, which is more the urban areas. That's where you're more, they were going through gentrification, okay? But anyway, it was in the cities. Then you have the countryside with the people with the farms, you know, these kind of remote areas. If you ever do like I do, sometimes I did it last Sunday. Uh, I think it was last Sunday. Just got in my car, went driving for a bit. Uh, but give me some good bony James, turn my jazz loud, open my sunroof, roll my windows down, and I crank it and I enjoy it. That's how I relax, okay? So I'm rolling, and I notice down in the Temecula in the winery area, it's just these people with these farms. It's just really big. So now I need you to see that the word spread in the villages 
in the cities and on the farms. It's like three different groups of demographics. You, you see this. So everybody, everybody was going to get the sick folk because you can be rich in a city and you got some sick folk. You can be in a village and a farm and you got some sick folk. You can be wherever you are and you got some sick folk. And everybody, no matter where they were, they went and they bought the sick out to the marketplaces. That's where Jesus spent most of his time, and we'll talk about that some other time. Watch this. They begged him to let the sick do what? Touch what? The fringe of his robe. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe. Where did they get that from? Nobody else was doing it before then. One lady knocked her domino over, and now everybody in the village in the cities, in the country, everybody's going to get their sick folk because of one lady. Now, if that lady had pulled back into obscurity, I ain't going to say nothing. I'm going to just hide, go about my business. All these other people wouldn't have been healed. For some of us, we need to see others. We need a leader. We need somebody to go before us. Fellas, you remember when we were younger, and, and I know from when I was a kid, we, that's when Evil Knievel, you guys remember Evil Knievel? And, and he was we like, who? <laughs> okay. He was a daredevil. So he would ride his motorcycle, hit a ramp, and jump over some buses or cars. Boom. And it would even come on Wild World of Sports. Remember uh, ABC, Wild World of Sports, okay? Okay, so uh, it was a big deal. Evil Knievel, Evil Knievel. So we wanted to be Evil Knievel too. So we got our little bicycles. We'd get some bricks, a piece of wood, ride real fast, and hit that ramp. And oh God, then we got a couple of skateboards. We're going to jump three skateboards. <laughs> we was kids. But usually you raise that ramp and everybody kind of like, I don't know. But as soon as that first one goes, everybody followed. So my question to you today, what do you need to step out and do that you're scared to do? But watch how so many other people are going to get free and believe simply because you had faith and courage to shift. I need you to think about it. This is the domino effect. Watch this. They begged him to let the sick touch at least the fringe of his robe and all, say all. All, how many people are waiting? How many people are waiting for you? It's not so much what you were delivered from. It's who you were delivered for. It's not what you were delivered from. It's who you were delivered Four. Years ago, my wife and I recognized in our prayer that there were children that had not yet been born, or we had not yet met, that were going to benefit from our obedience. Who's waiting on you? Who's waiting on you? And the thing is this, you need to speak your testimony. You need to tell people, you can't be get back in obscurity, I got my breakthrough, I ain't going to tell nobody. Got my blessing. Lord, answer my prayer. Have you ever noticed how much I like to get in your business? Tanya, you remember last week we were talking? We were supposed to meet? And I'm like, okay, where are you going to open up the school? What's next? What are, you, what are you doing? One, it helps me to know how to pray. But it helps me to encourage her because somebody's going to come behind her and see her and believe. And they're going to go and shift and benefit other people. See, the thing is that we keep thinking it's all about us. It's about other people. It's about other people. People are waiting on me as an example so they can get their breakthrough. Man, I keep hearing, I ain't never had, I, we ain't never had a pastor, I ain't never heard nobody be as transparent as you. And I'm not trying to be transparent, I just want you to really not only get the breakthrough, but break out. <laughs> Last thing, some space, some of our space probes, space items, they're orbiting the earth. They broke free of gravity, right? I mean, you know, that initial thing and boosted right. And they're, they're orbiting. And I know some of them, that's what they were designed to do, to get them in orbit. But then there's some space probes that are going way out past Pluto. And I, I don't think we were saved to orbit. Ain't no wrong in orbiting. But ah, it's bigger than that. It's more than that. There are other planets that we need to be exploring. I'm not calling you astronauts, but I'm saying in your calling and in your purpose. So, and I understand my heart, okay? And, and you guys that have been, I've been through some stuff too. And I got delivered from it, but I can't go back in obscurity. 
I can't play small. We were talking this morning. You know, we had the memorial service yesterday, and we talked to the family. He left this morning, and we were sitting up a little earlier than normal, just sitting at the, at the table, and I'm having coffee, and I'm looking. And I'm thinking, like, you know, Jackie, it's showtime. I got to be 10, 12 years to rock this. I got to get off my duff. We got to make this happen. Clock's ticking. I'm 60. How much time do you have left? I'm a little bit 100. What? Look, how much time? <laughs> you can live that long, believe God to live that long, and that's fine. But how effective will you be? And if you're scared, you plan small, you, you pray to get your healing, and you think that's the sum total of it, no. Bow your heads, please. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for a real breakthrough. I thank you for renewed minds. Many of us have been at it for 12 years. Prayer gets answered, but there's, there's still not this emotional healing that needs to take place. And we tend to shrink back into the familiar and how our minds were shaped prior to our deliverance, prior to meeting you. And my prayer, Heavenly Father, is that we will be willing to lay aside gossip, insecurity, childlike behavior, in our thinking, Paul said, when he became a man, he, put, he thought like a child early on. He reasoned like a child. But when he became a man, he put away childish things, and think, including his thinking and reasoning. I pray that we would really allow you to heal our inner hurts and inner pains, dear Lord God. Touch us, Heavenly Father, in that area that's intangible. That our thought life, Heavenly Father, is word-based and word-centered. That we're not just speaking idle words, non-performing words, as Jesus warned us against. But we're speaking indeed words of faith that originate in our heart and shift our thinking, Heavenly Father. Literally new neural pathways will be developed in our brain that will be faith-based. And we will literally become the pit walking epistles, living epistles. Witnesses living out. Divine purposes, Father God. Helping others to get set free. Not content with material blessings. But really, our hearts and minds are about other people. So I thank you, Lord, that this church will experience a domino effect, a ripple effect. We will get our first domino to fall. We we'll walk in freedom, healing, restoration, moving to another level, Heavenly Father. And then others will see and believe that they can also and release their faith. And then that generation will impact others. And then they will impact others. And then they will impact others, Father God. And when we get to heaven, there literally will be hundreds of thousands of people that have been positively impacted simply because we believe and we obeyed and we were not afraid. And we gave our testimony and lives and families and societies, communities shifted. In Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks for joining us. We pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Now, this is the part in the service where you can participate through your giving. Here at New Day, we have three ways to give. First, you can text us. Text New Day Corona to 77977 and follow the instructions in your text message. Or you can visit us online. Visit newdaycorona.org and click the giving tab. Lastly, you can mail your gift to 1114 West Ontario Avenue, Corona, California, 92882. Here at New Day, we also have an offering confession. Let's declare it together. Father, we honor you as we present to you your tithes and our offerings. You are the authority over all we have. We give an obedience to you, O God, who causes all grace to abound towards us. For we have sufficiency in all things and abundance for every good work. There is no lack in our lives. For we give to the poor and support the work of missionaries. Therefore, as we sow our financial seed, we thank you for the harvest of wisdom to manage our financial affairs, financial favor, oil and mineral rights, jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits and promotions, favorable settlements and rebates, the return of what's lost or stolen, scholarships and grants, increased sales and commissions, the miracle of debt cancellation, favorable financial surprises, every bill and every debt paid. We declare that we not only have enough, but we have more than enough. We declare that we have enough to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ throughout the whole earth. 
for we are blessed to be a blessing and we will care for the widows and orphans in Jesus name. Amen. Who can stand against the Lord? No one. No one can. No one will. Who will stand against us?